Okay, so uh, yeah, West Coast, then thanks for uh, introducing the pro proliferance of ports. Uh, there have been building ports in the West Coast on like Grace in the last few years. And that's what started this project. Um, there were lots of delays in the EA process, and the companies were coming to us and saying, exactly what do you need for us to provide to you? And it was going back and forth. And, you know, and if you've been involved in the EA process, sometimes this can take years. So we said, we'll come up with some simple guidelines, some simple sort of definitions of the things we're going to provide to us. And so this is a really small project. It's one I do kind of off the side of my desk, but it's had kind of big impact as far as uh, Billions of dollars of port infrastructure and and um, uh, skip pass. I'll just sort of get to the pictures here. I think <laughs> um, the issue is that there are very few dis official disposal as seed uh, sites around Canada. These are the ones that Environment Canada has set up only decades ago. And so companies who want to um, who want to, uh, to to build like here in, in Douglas Channel and you know they, it's just most of these sites require um, millions of tons of dredging, and it's, it's it's just impractical for them to bring it up to to these sites. So they want to find their own sites, disposable of sea sites. And uh, these are the sorts of things that went back and forth in debate. And we said, well, we'll help you by by creating some guidelines on what you need to provide to us to license a new site. Um, and at the same time that we were defined, making definitions and doing experiments to test those definitions, we actually uh, set about defining the dispersion properties at all of these existing sites. And so in the last uh, seven or eight years, we've, we've managed to define the dispersion properties of these um, five different disposal sites, uh, as well as um, Create the definitions for others to be created. Uh, some of the some of the techniques we use, I'll just sort of run past uh, these quickly. Uh, we can look at things like sediment density and determine and sediment uh, grade size and determine whether an area is you know sediment bypassing or whether it's settling there, and that gives us sort of a long term uh, settling sediment settling. Uh, you can do pouring, you can do isotopic analysis, uh, which tells us, uh, again, kind of the long-term sedimentation rates in an area. And uh, the definitions we really worked on here were the short-term fate or short-term uh, dispersive properties of an area. Um, and that's by deploying acoustic Doppler and current instruments from oceanographic research ships. Uh, the issue is, though, that most companies don't operate ships like this, they operate maybe ships like this. And so so while we were using these very advanced techniques, we also had to come up with techniques that we could compare that a, that a, a consultant um, could use. And so for instance, here there's about $150,000 worth of equipment, uh, including an acoustic Doppler, current profiler, acoustic releases, and all the rest of it. And the instrument that we're testing that consultants could use is just this this small one in here. It's about ten thousand dollars. So we kind of compare the two methods. Um, and the definition we came up with was also had to be very simple. It couldn't be you know it couldn't be based on kind of years of scientific research. It really had to be something as simple as we're going to call a dispersive environment. Uh, an environment where the currents measured are 25 centimeters per second greater than one percent of the time. There's all sorts of issues that we can debate about that definition, but that was something again simple that we provided. There's a deployment we did on on Halloween. <laughs> this is this is uh, typical of the sort of the the big oceanographic uh, sort of stuff we do. And again, the simple definition we gave is: uh, do, do do currents occur above 25 centimeters per second for more than one percent of the time? In this case, they don't. They only occur half a percent of the time, or something. So in this case, we're calling this this site non-dispersive, and therefore certain types of materials can be disposed of there. Um, and, and that's that's kind of where this why this criteria is important: dispersive versus non-dispersive. Um, 
even though they're, it may be non-dispersive, we test the definition further and say, but were there dispersion events? And so we measure turbidity and sort of thing and say, yes, there were. Here's what they're caused by. They may be caused by river blooms or, or other things other than currents as well. And here's just this last year's work. Um, there's all sorts of, of stuff going on in the Fraser Delta. And this, this port here, the Delta port, has just been uh, approved for a major expansion. Um, and this is the disposal site here. As we were doing, we, we also do work on kind of the landslide susceptibility of this whole Fraser Delta area. Um, the, the implication is that during an earthquake, this whole thing failed and, and all of that. We haven't found evidence of that. But, um, and we determined that this site is dispersive um, and therefore should be treated with as a dis dispersive site. But at the same time, we detected in this disposal site, there was a huge, basically, landslide that took out the entire disposal site. So we carefully measured all of these currents and the sediment transported back and forth. And then at the end of the year, the whole thing transported down the slope. So, so, um, so it, it's important information for environment Canada is where the sediment is ending up that they're, that they're putting there. It's not just uh, dredge sediment, tidal sediment, it's construction sediment um, and, uh, and uh, other, other things that are allowed to be disposed of at sea. So the work uh, where I said it has impact is we, so not only we've defined uh, some parameters, we've, uh, we've provided specific guidelines for Environment Canada to give the proponents that they now use. Um, this has led into uh, fisheries and oceans saying, well, we would like some guidelines on our fish and trolling near sort of marine protected areas. And, and they've asked us to do a similar work in that, and that'll be upcoming. Uh, as well, uh, the International Seabed Authority contacted us and said, we like this idea of producing guidelines from simple science. And so they're, they're, they, they've also kind of, um, so I'm a part of the, uh, the guidance team, I guess, for, for certain criteria for seabed offshore, seabed mining, all a part of this, uh, all a part of this work. And we report it to the London Convention on Dumping at Sea, um, normally, the Environment Canada is just reporting kind of monitoring efforts, but now we're kind of able to report these more innovative kind of scientific definitions and things. I think that's, that's pretty much it.